This game has been popping up for me everywhere, recommending it to me, asking me to play it, so I decided to spend 100 days in Subnautica. And the best part is that I know absolutely nothing about this game, so this will be fun! Can I become the king of the seas within 100 days? Nope! Well, let's go ahead and find out. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this video. Oh, 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 we're in it. We're in it. Okay, okay. Oh, I can't do anything. Oh, oh, that's gonna hit me. Oh. Okay, we're awake. Now what? I'm gonna burn to death. Okay, we're out. We're out. Alright. Get me out of here. Oh, I'm playing. Oh, extinguish the fire! Get it all! <laughs> Look at that, I'm a pro already. Press F8 to report bugs. Okay. Oh, what is this, my little tablet? Oh, it sings to me. You, re you really couldn't load any faster? Oh, okay, so this is like my inventory. Oh, okay, okay, I'm getting it. Oh, weird, you interact with the click instead of E? That's gonna take a little getting used to. Oh, is that where I came from? Speaking about where I came from, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over and gaming will never be the same again. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. A couple of my favorite features of the game, starting off with the Doom Tower, sprawls over 120 levels with all new bosses, and it's definitely a challenge even for season players, not to mention the new four-headed Hydra boss with each head having a different ability. And this month, Raid just added Awakening which allows you to choose a powerful blessing that can transform the way your champions perform in battle. I mean, who doesn't love a good AoE attack that looks as beautiful as this? And on top of that, they added the Iron Twins Fortress Dungeon, which all I have to say is good luck. And for the big news, Raid just released the ultimate version of everyone's favorite champion, Death Knight, which you can get for yourself if you log in seven days in a row between now and October 27th. Right now is the best time to get started, but you can also use the code DKRISES for a bunch of free stuff to instantly max level your ultimate Death Knight 5 star ascension. Oh yeah, and for my new players, why don't you click on the link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. Not only are you getting a bunch of free stuff, but you're also getting an epic champion, Aina, who can help you step up your game. All of this beautiful loot will be waiting for you right here. You can download Raid Shadow Legends on iOS or Android, my friend. Friends. Oh, dude, what? Gotta love survival games. No tutorial. Just go. Just go out there and do you do you, dude. Do I just hop in the water? I guess so. Oh, wow. Oh, it's really beautiful in here. What is this? I'm just gonna start picking stuff. I don't know. All I really did on day one was gather a bunch of materials and learn all about the oxygen situation because apparently I ran out of it really quick. Okay, that's damaged, so that needs to be repaired. Use fabricator. What? I don't have to craft this? It's already here for me? Bleach, filtered water, equipment. Okay, this is a little confusing, but I'll figure it out. Storage container. Oh, oh there's food. No water! Wait, when did I get an egg? I then did some exploring and found some fragments laying around, but I couldn't do anything with them. And then I got chased by something called a stalker, so apparently I'm not safe in this game. Hey, little fishy. Oh, that's aggressive! Ladder fish. Oh, what's this? It's like a boil. That's kind of weird. Oh, what the hell? It burned me! Okay, don't go near the frickin' hole. After exploring for most of the day and gathering the materials, I looked at my inventory and it was pretty full, but I had no clue what to do with any of it. So as night was approaching, I headed back into my life pod because you're not gonna catch me in the waters at night. Are you crazy? Oh, I can use this to cook fish? Oh, nice. Okay, so that's how I get my food. I just grab the fish and cook them. Titanium. Ah, oh, that's what the salvage is for. Okay. Well, I guess we might as well make the knife. Is that gonna help us? <laughs> I don't know. So if there's one thing I did know, the high capacity O2 tank is what I wanted to craft first. So I looked at the requirements and decided to go out on a journey.
Oh, flashlight makes the cave so much easier. I was struggling finding the materials for the high capacity O2 tank, so I started crafting everything else that I could. This area looks so cool. Oh, silver! That's what I needed! Eh! <laughs> when I got back to the life pot, I crafted a repair tool because it seemed pretty necessary. Repair this. Play message. I really don't want to listen to all this. I'm going to be honest. Oh, does, what is it? Does this just poop out med kits for me? No. Nope. Repair this. That's fancy. All right. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! Towards the end of day two, I found the last remaining quartz I needed to craft the high capacity O2 tank. At the start of day three, I crafted the rebreather, which apparently increases your oxygen efficiency, whatever that means. I then noticed in the tool section there was something called a scanner, which I probably should have built a lot sooner because when you scan stuff, it unlocks important blueprints. Later on in the day, I went out to gather more materials because still, at this point, I had no clue what I was doing, so I was just trying to gather everything I would need. On the morning of day four, I built the habitat builder, which I'm assuming is how you craft a base. Oh, okay. Wait, do I just, yeah, I just hold this down and then it crafts? It? That's pretty fancy. Midday, I had an epiphany that I could scan these parts I've been seeing, and sure enough, I was right. Wait, what did that do? I have to find three of those, and then I can... <gasps> that is so freaking cool. Okay, well, I guess we're going on a search for all that stuff. What the hell is a sea moth? Sounds kind of cool. Oh, it looks like a vehicle. Ooh, I want to find the rest of those for sure. I'm actually really scared to go in here. Can I even go in here? I can. What is this? Abandoned PDA. Open data box. I have no clue what I'm doing, but it's kind of cool. Draft battery. Wait. Why is there a countdown? Why is there a countdown? What the hell is going on? Oh, hell no. It just exploded. Okay, well, I'm fine, right? Radiation suit. Oh, am I taking radiation? Apparently the explosion is all part of the story, so I just ignored it and crafted a mobile vehicle bay, which I soon learned is how you craft vehicles. Makes sense, right? Day six, I crafted a radiation suit because the game made it seem pretty important to have one. I then went out on a scanning frenzy and found something called a sea glide, so found both of the parts, went home and crafted one up. All right, let's see what this thing does. Oh, it makes me really fast. Well, now that I'm fast, I guess I'm gonna go check out this life pod situation. Dude, this is so pretty. I love this. I soon found out that each abandoned life pod will have a PDA and then also a data box, which gives you free blueprints. After checking out the life pod, I went on another scanning frenzy and then I headed over to the Aurora and found some supply crates. Dude, this place is terrifying. I just saw a big shadow of something, and I'm gonna ignore it for now. I don't think I'm supposed to go in this ship yet. This is very frightening. What the hell? No, something is on me, dude. What does that even mean? Oh, shoot, dude! That just almost killed me in one hit! I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out! Run! Day 7, I was on a mission to find the rest of the Seamoth fragments because it seemed like a pretty good vehicle. I don't know what this is, but it seems like a good idea. Bioreactor. Uh, it sounds like something that could give me power. I don't know. Laser cutter. That sounds useful. Is that what I think it is? Yes! Okay, I think I only need one more after this. I do. Okay, we're getting somewhere. On the morning of day 8, I found the last laser cutter fragment I needed to unlock the blueprints. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me that's what it is. Tell me that's what it is. Oh, yes, we've unlocked the Seamoth, baby. Let's go. So I went back to the mobile vehicle bay, checked out the requirements, and saw it was pretty easy, so I got started. It's time. I'm so excited. Oh, oh, hell, this is all fancy. Enter Seamoth. Oh, damn, dude. This is so cool. Yo, what is the propulsion cannon? That sounds sick. Oh, I got it unlocked. Yo, man, I'm really starting to stress out. How the hell do I get out of here? Oh, God, I have no clue where I am. 
I don't know what happens when you die in this game. Okay, I see my thing, but how to... Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm definitely dead. I'm definitely dead. Oh, gosh. Oh, the screen's getting black. Well, I... Oh. I just spawned back at the life pod? Do I have all my stuff on me? Yeah, I have all my stuff. Who cares? Who cares? I'll die whenever I want. On day nine, I made it back to my sea moth and saw some giant tentacles detecting what now? Oh no, it's absolutely not worth it. What the hell am I doing? I didn't know this game was all like that. Oh dude, I need to go. After getting out of there, I saw some weird things spawn in that looked like a little wizard, so I decided to head to the surface because it scared me. And that's when I found a freaking island. Wait, can I go on this island? Oh my gosh, I thought this was just an ocean game. What are you? Okay, you look like a Pokemon. Oh, of course it's nighttime. Why wouldn't it be? Scary cave. I wonder if I'm gonna find good resources since it's like far off. Lithium! Oh, dude, what the ass is that? Oh, hell no, bro. I don't think I'm ready for this at all. Get away from me, sand skirt. What is this? Do you do anything? Can I jump? Nope. Okay. You're useless. What is this? Why do I feel like this is extremely late game stuff? What? Dude, where am I? Yo, this is the second alien tablet I found. Diamond? Oh, if this is anything like Minecraft, I just hit the jackpot. What in the actual F, bro? This is some alien cult crap. What is an ion cube? What? Dude, there's already a cube there. What do you mean? All right, maybe I should just come back here after I've learned a little bit more about this game. I started off day 11 by crafting a laser cutter and then going out to find the rest of the resources I needed to craft the propulsion cannon. After doing so, I decided it was time that I probably look for a base location and set up. When I came across the boil that burned me, so I started building here because I figured it might be a good spot. But I can't build a base without a multi-purpose room, so I went to this island and started scanning everything in sight. And as much as I would love to show every single time I went out and farmed for all the stuff I'm building, this game is a major grind, so that would be a waste of your time. Now sit back and watch as I build my base over the course of the next couple of days. And now that my lantern tree was fully grown, I was able to pick the fruit, put it in the bioreactor, and create power. The radio was very important for progression because every time you played a distress call, it would give you a location to go to. And my base was finally somewhat complete. On day 16, I decided to head to the Aurora and maybe check out the ship. This ship had a bunch of these PDAs which were important for progression because each time you picked one up and read it, it gave you a hint on what you were supposed to do next. When I got to the cargo bay area, I noticed the door needed a code which was in my notes to self, so I typed it in and kept pressing forward. My first time using the laser cutter seemed pretty cool. I felt like a character from Star Wars, but I made my way through and there was some pretty important stuff in this room. And little did I know what lied behind this door was gonna change everything for me. After scanning four different prawn suit fragments, it fully unlocked the blueprint, that way I could craft it. And this right here is where things got a little weird, sticky, if you will. 
So, basically, I went about this how I would go about Ark. If I don't know something, I look it up. So, I looked up what the code was to get in this room, and little did I know that it unlocks the blueprint for the Neptune, which is how you beat the game. You fly off in a rocket ship. And I didn't know that, but we saved it for day 100. It didn't change anything. Now that that's out of the way. And I did the same exact thing for Cabin 1. Don't come at me, please. I'm a newbie. I'm sorry. And after going into what I thought was the last available room on this ship, I made my way off and headed home. When I got back to my base, I hung all my pretty posters and then played the next radio message. After doing so, I checked how much the prawn suit cost and I got started on that. If you've never played this game, you need a stalker tooth to make enameled glass, which is extremely boring. The last thing I was missing for the prawn suit was ruby and a gel sack, which are kind of rare, so I just headed to this distress call instead. Wait a minute, what is this? I just found a ruby on accident. <laughs> That's kind of cool, I guess. Thank you. What is this? Lithium deposit, creature egg, eye stock. What is that? Gel sack? Oh! Oh, I have everything I need now! Finally. Ultra high capacity tank. No way! I could have more oxygen than this? Day 23, I crafted the aerogel necessary to craft the prawn suit, and finally, I was able to make it. So let's see what this thing can do. Okay, two arms. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Can we jump? Oh, it's a jetpack? Oh, uh, this is nice. Okay, it's pretty slow, but I am assuming it has its purpose. Day 24, I took my prawn suit over to the next distress call, and this thing was nice because it could go as deep as 900 meters stock. After doing so, I crafted myself a compass, which would help me follow tutorials a lot easier. <laughs> I then headed to Mushroom Forest because I heard that there was a bunch of fragments here that would help me later on down the road, so I started looking. After scanning as much as I could, I found this little trench with blood oil in it, which I'm assuming is pretty rare. And with some more exploring, I found a time capsule, which gave me some goodies. It gave me a lot of stuff. What is it? A thermoblade cooks and sterilizes small organisms for immediate consumption? Whoa, this is so sick looking. It's like a CSGO or a Valorant knife. I'm sorry, Subnautica. I did not mean to do you dirty like that. Uh, please forgive me. I started off day 27 by crafting a modification station, which gave me access to some pretty good upgrades. And of course, it only made sense for me to craft the ultra capacity O2 tank because it gave me 225 oxygen, which would allow me to explore more. Day 27, I crafted a moon pool, which was basically a docking bay for your vehicles, but I'm not sure there was much more purpose than that. Day 28, I got another radio message, so I decided to head towards the signal. And that's when I found a crash site that I've been looking for for a couple of days now, specifically for the power cell charger fragment that I needed to unlock it and this data box. As I was heading for the signal, unfortunately, I forgot my radiation suit, so I started dying from that, and the crush depth on my Seamoth was only 200 meters, so there was no way I was going to be able to do this right now. Day 29, I headed back into the Aurora because there was a module for the Seamoth that I missed. When I got back home, I equipped the depth module, which gave me an additional 100 meters, and when I went out to go explore, I got rocked by this Leviathan. What the hell was that? I'm gone. Remind me to not go this way. After looking for a different route, I found the abandoned PDA and then headed to the bottom of the ocean to find another. After doing so, I went into the jellyfish cave because it held magnetite, which was a rare resource that I needed to be able to make a better depth module for the sea moth. So first I needed to be able to craft the level two, which enabled me to then craft the level three. And now with that equipped to my sea moth, it gave me a crush depth of 900 meters, which was gonna enable me to explore a lot more. Speaking of exploring, I headed to a crash site, which enabled me to unlock the Cyclops, and I found a bunch of prawn suit arm attachments. Day 33, I crafted a vehicle upgrade console, which allowed me to change the colors of my vehicles, but also had a fabricator that allowed me to craft awesome upgrades for my vehicles as well. I'm assuming this is straightforward. 
grapple arm pulls me. Okay, that's pretty cool. After some research, I found that the Cyclops was one of the biggest, baddest machines you could have in this game. So after adjusting the position of my console, I was able to craft one. Damn, dude, that thing is freaking massive. Okay, thank you for telling me where to get on because I've been looking for a while. Oh, this place is sick. Oh, look at all these storage bins. What? Oh, this is like a whole ass submarine, dude. Okay, this is the engine, power cells, fabricator. What's this way? What is this? Open, no vehicle dock. Oh, I can dock vehicles in there? Oh, this is where the captain is. So, how do I turn on the engine? There? Oh, that's so cool. After playing around with the Cyclops, I got it painted, and damn did it look good. Day 35, all I did was go on a PDA and data box run when I found this awesome reinforced dive suit, which gives you 50% damage reduction and heat reduction. I spent most of day 36 searching for the blood kelp forest because I needed blood oil, which is used in a lot of rare recipes, so it was definitely a good find. When I got back home, I played another radio message, which seemed to be a pretty important one because it gave me a timer at the top right and said when the sunbeam will arrive. But I ignored it for now and crafted up some benzene, which allowed me to craft a reinforced diving suit. Dying in this game isn't a huge deal, though it is pretty annoying, so this would allow me to take less damage. After doing that, I crafted a drill arm for the prawn suit, went ahead and docked it inside of the Cyclops, and then went on an adventure that I probably wasn't ready for yet. I went to the Blood Kelp Forest because it held the entrance to the Lost River, which was an extremely intimidating cave. All right, let's see how this works. Oh, just get right in. Oh, dude, I feel like Iron Man, bro. <laughs> uh, is this it? It looks like it, I guess. Oh, I'm so scared. What is this, Uranite Crystal? That seems rare. Oh, this is the stuff I need. After getting a couple of the harder to find resources, I went ahead and docked up my prawn suit and headed to the location of where the sunbeam would be landing. Oh, this is the island with the alien building. Yeah. Survivor, we see you. Bull crap, I don't Man, see you, I dude. Don't know how you held out down there. We broke yeah, me either. And we're descending towards the landing site. Well, there you are. Come save me. Wait. What the hell? That building's moving. No way. You bastards, dude. Awesome. Awesome. Not like I wanted to escape or anything. Guess I'll have to do a full 100 days. I looked around a little bit and found that at the bottom of the alien building, there was an entrance for me to go inside and explore it. Well, this place is freaking massive. What is that? Oh, that's an ion cube. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, this is what you use the tablets for. Okay, it's all coming together now. What's this? Oh, hell no, dude. Interact. Oh, no. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Are you gonna probe me, bro? Oh, dude. That is so jacked up, man. Did anything even happen? Reads what? Oh, did I just screw myself? Damn it! Man, from this point forward, things started getting really weird. When I got back to my base, I crafted a power cell charger. Let's see what I need to craft this. What is that? Oh my gosh, that's so freaking loud, bro. Um, excuse me. What the freaking heck, dude? Anyways, what I was going to do was craft the jetpack upgrade for my prawn suit, which was going to allow me to jump way higher and for a longer period of time. And jump. Holy crap, dude! And as I was just minding my own business in my base... Not again, bro. Is there a damn speaker or something? 
What the hell? After getting bullied by music, I crafted the level 1 prawn suit depth module. And then I started adding some more stuff onto my base because as it sits, it was looking pretty sad. The whole reason for the additions was for a scanner room because apparently it allowed me to find everything a lot easier in the world of Subnautica. Bro, this game literally makes me feel like a superhero. Oh, what is all this? Is this all the stuff I can find? Fragment. All you give me is a dot. That's it. Okay, what's this? Camera drone. Oh! Crafting the HUD ship allowed me to see everything on my screen that I was searching for. So I headed that way, found a PDA, and also discovered the beacon, which was going to be helpful. You remember the boil that was next to my base? Yeah, that was able to provide me power through the thermal plant, which was pretty sick. Shortly after, I found out that growing crops in this game is super overpowered, because you put an item into a bed and then farm it, and it gives you three back. So you do the math there. When I got back home, I played another radio message, which led me to the next life pod. So after a Heading there, I received the PDA, and then I realized that so far in this game, I haven't really read any of these PDAs, and I had no clue what I was doing, so I went ahead and spent the next day reading through every single PDA to see what I needed to do. Uh, whoa, what's happening to my screen? What the hell is that? Yo, 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 yo! Bro, what are you? What the heck? After that weird little cutscene, I was told to do a self-scan, which in fact told me that I had a bacterial infection that was progressing. And as you saw earlier in the game, it said that anybody with an infection cannot leave the planet, so I'm kinda screwed until I figure that out. But after finding out this information, I continued reading every PDA because this was obviously gonna hold the information that I needed. And after straining my eyes reading all of that, I found out that there's alien facility locations that I have to explore so I can figure out how to cure myself. So when I got back home, I played another radio message, and this is where they told me the captain's code. So if I would have just been patient and waited, I would have been able to do it legit. But it's fine. It's all good. So after some preparations, I headed back to the Lost River Cave because that is where I needed to look for these alien facilities. Oh yeah, and you remember those beacons that I was talking about? Well, you can place them down, give them a name, and then it'll give you a placeholder so you never get lost in the future. Anyways, as I made my way into the cave, I was aggressively greeted by a ghost leviathan, which if you didn't know, is extremely dangerous. So I chickened out and ran off to one of the side walls when I found this little secret entrance. So I decided to head in. Whoa, what's this? Oh, it's like an airlock. I'm so tired of seeing these portals that I can't do anything with. Anyways, I finally decided to man up, grapple onto this ghost leviathan, and try to kill it with my drill arm, which, by the way, I spent 20 minutes doing this and got absolutely nowhere. I will kill you, mister. Okay, this hurts. I'm out, I'm out. After escaping the wrath of the Leviathan, I followed a very linear path and found the very first alien location. It looked like all of the other alien buildings I've been into, but hopefully it held the secrets I needed to progress. So you know the drill by now, put a purple tablet in this little thing, it opens a fancy door, I make my way through, and I also found a couple of data terminals in this one, which was nice. I'm not sure I found what I came for, but I don't think it's coincidence that after getting a couple of data terminals in here and then scanning myself, that a little cutscene happened. What the hell's happening to my hands? Yo, this is like the origin story to a villain, bro. After finishing up at that location, I made my way a little deeper into the cave when I found a very, very scary area that I'm not sure I was ready to explore yet. What the hell was that? That's what those things do? Oh my god, where's my prawn suit, brother? I don't want to die, I don't want to die. Oh, there it is, okay. Dude, that was... that is so toxic. So not only was I getting bullied by warpers, but if you look at how deep this place was and the crush depth on my suit, not good. Something that was good though is I found Chironite, which is a very rare resource. What the hell is that, bro? Again? Uh, okay, I don't know what that is, but I hate it, dude. I, no. That thing looks like it could swallow me whole. 
Okay, I'ma leave. I most definitely was not ready for this area, so I decided to head home. That way I could make the level 2 prawn suit depth module. That way I could go even deeper. So I loaded up into the Cyclops and made the slow trip home. And speaking of home, when I got back, I played another radio message, which gave me this. And I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I know that's not correct. And after some boring grinding, I was able to make the depth module for the Cyclops, and I was able to make it for the prawn suit. So now both had a crush depth of 1700 meters, and I was going to be able to explore anything I wanted. So now with a crush depth of 1700 meters for both my Cyclops and Prawn Suit, I felt I was ready so I headed back to the scary cave because I needed answers. The only difference this time is that I used the Cyclops to make my way all the way down instead of just the Prawn Suit because I needed to protect it. And I'm not sure that was an amazing idea because, well, you'll see. I'm gonna be honest, I came here with a plan, but I have no idea what I'm looking for. Okay, you stay away. After going a little deeper, I found that crazy scary entrance, and that's when another cutscene happened, which means I'm probably in the right place. You again! What do you want, woman? So as evil as this little spirit seems, it said it wanted to help me. So I was a little confused, but I had to worry about this fire first. Oh yeah, and uh, let me be the one to tell you to never bring a cyclops down here unless you want to repair every five seconds. But on the bright side, I found the primary facility. And when I got here, I realized I needed a blue tablet, which I didn't have access to yet. We finally made it. Damn it. So after some quick research, luckily, there was another facility super close to me. So I headed into this one, which held the blue tablet. And the cool thing is after finding a tablet the first time, you're able to craft it as much as you want. So in the future, if I ever needed this thing again, it would be easy peasy. Yo, this thing's hidden away like it's the answer to everyone's problems. Even though I had the blue tablet now and I was ready to dip, I figured I might as well explore the rest of this place. And I'm glad I did because it told me all about the primary location. And after some more research, I'm also extremely happy I came in here because I found something called Ion Power Data. And that was very, very necessary to complete this game. Upon arrival at the primary location, I inserted the blue tablet when the creepy lady started talking to me again and told me to come here. Which I thought was a little weird, but I'll keep moving forward. I knew this place was the real deal because when I came in, a bunch of lights on the main path lit up and it kind of scared the crap out of me. The cool thing was that in the middle of this place, there was an ion cube node that kept refreshing, so it was unlimited farming of these beautiful little green goobers. And it seemed like there was a purpose because there was four portals at each corner of this place, and uh, not too sure why. After getting all the portals online, I crafted a fabricator inside of my Cyclops, that way I could make a blue tablet because the main room of this facility needed a blue tablet. And let me tell you, what was through this door was extremely frightening. I did not want to go down here at all. Well, a cannonball, I guess. Oh, what the hell? What is this? Oh, what? Who are you? Oh, that's the lady. For my dreams! After that whole spiel, I found out that this place was completely safe. Nothing in here would attack you, which was nice. I feel like she didn't tell me too much information, so after looking around a little bit, I opened up one portal, and then I found five different eggs, and I put an ion cube in this box, which gave me a data terminal. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. 
What are you doing? Why are you getting so close? Oh! Ah, oh, dude, that's sick! This game is so cool. Well, thank you, woman. After she cleared the sand for me, I opened up the portal, and that's when I got another cutscene. Wait, are you the good guy or the bad guy? Am I helping you be bad? There's no way you're bad. Hatching enzymes? Oh, that's how I hatch the eggs, obviously. So I sat in here for a while and did some research and found out that the four portals in the main facility actually led to the four ingredients you need to make the hatching enzymes. So obviously, that's what I did. And luckily I did my research before starting any of this because I was able to bring everything necessary to craft a mini base inside of this whatever place because I was going to need a fabricator to be able to craft those enzymes and I didn't want to head all the way back home because that would take years. So after getting the base powered up, I placed the fabricator and got these enzymes crafted up. Alright lady, I got your freaking enzymes, you better not be an asshole. Please be a good person. So there was nothing left to do but to head to the egg area and put the enzymes into the terminal. Please don't screw me over. Okay, there you go. I hope you're happy. Ugh. Yeah, be free. Oh no. Oh no, this is actually like really sad. So she's dying and that's why she needed her young to hatch so they could be free and carry on her legacy. I'm gonna cry, you mother fluffer. Friend? I was your friend? <gasps> I'm so sad. I'm sorry I doubted you. You poor lady. Dude, what are you guys doing? You throwing up little goo balls everywhere? What are these? Concentrated Enzyme 42. Oh, I guess I was supposed to do this? No way. No freaking way this is the serum to save me. There's no way. Okay, am I right? Self-scan maybe? Shut up, dude. There's no way. Oh my god. This story is amazing! What a beautiful game! Ah. But as you know, I was healed now, so I had one thing left to do, and that was to leave this place. So, I got started on building the Neptune. But as you can see, I did it the lazy butthole way and broke down a lot of my stuff in my base, that way I didn't have to farm for it. Time to get out of here! Wait, no. Is that just the launch platform? Ah! <laughs> I was soon smacked in the face by reality because when I got onto the platform I realized that each individual part of this rocket ship had to be built, so it wasn't gonna be that easy for me to get out of here. What is this? Oh my gosh, I'm not even building the ship yet! Son of a... Damn it! <sighs> Luckily for me, without even knowing about the Neptune, I farmed a buttload of the rare resources in the scary cave, which was gonna help a lot here. Funny enough, the thing that was taking me the most time was all of the easy-to-get resources, because 
Well, I didn't have too much of it. I cut this whole process down into the pretty version for you guys, but this took me a really long time because each part of the Neptune was an insane amount of titanium. But not only that, I had no copper, gold, or any of the other things I needed to make wiring kits, so I had to go out and find all of that all over again. And looking at the requirements for the next part of this ship, made me realize how lucky I was to go into that blue tablet place because I was able to find the ion power cell data. If I didn't do that originally, I would have had to take another five to six day trip, which would have made this 105 days. And right here, I was really convinced that this was the last part of this ship that I had to build, but there was one more. There's always one freaking more. And the last part was actually extremely tough for me to build because not only did the enameled glass need a stalker tooth, which took a while to wait for, but I also needed to go out and find the Cyclops shield generator, which alone took me a couple of days because the tutorials in this game aren't very straightforward. There's no map, so it's very hard to follow. Please tell me this is the last part. Okay. Oh, oh, the music. It's done. Huh. So I went ahead and used the terminal to change the colors and make it, well, Sizen's ship. But then I had to name it. Thanks for 100K. And I had to name it that because you guys have exceeded my expectations. You all allow me to live out my dream every day, and it's surreal, honestly. I... I don't know what else to say other than thank you a billion times. And I will continue thanking you every day. But, my beautiful people, all good stories must come to an end, and my story in Subnautica was at an end. I was finished with all tasks I was faced with, so I said my final goodbyes to this place. I headed up the elevator and made my way into the Neptune. Now this was my favorite part of the whole ship because, well the time capsule thing is just super cool. And I remember finding one earlier in the game, so I put a couple of items in here that I would want to find if I was to play this game again. But I was the captain now. Everything was powered up and ready to go, and it was just up to me now to launch this ship. Ready to launch on your command, Captain. Launch in. Ten, nine, eight, oh, that's so seven, beautiful. The birds six, came to say goodbye five, to me. Four, Wait, get out of here. Don't die. Two, Leave birds. One. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, well, we're out of here. Time capsule jettisoned. See, uh, world soaked in water? <laughs> Bye, nerds. What a fun game. I honestly had a great time. Wait, what? Is this part of it? Hello? Not again. Not again. Oh, okay. It didn't hit us in the face this time. Okay, good. Performing gravity turn maneuver. This is really cool. Alright, well, I guess I'm out of here. Destination coordinates. 
nearest interstellar phase gate. Engaging ion boosters in 3, 2, 1. A beautiful game. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sands. We are different when we go oh, together. So beautiful. Goodbye, mother. If that's what you want to be called. Well. Thank you friends for watching. And don't forget if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. Let's hit 200k, well, sometime soon. I love you all. Goodbye.